Toy Story 3 would be the third film in the Toy Story series. Jonathan, what's the, it about? It is the continuing story of Andy's toys. Uh, all the lovable characters are back, Woody and, and Buzz. And, but now time has gone on, and Andy is about to go off to college. And the toys are trying to figure out what's going to happen with them, if they're going to be donated or trashed or put in the attic. And they end up going to the Sunnyside Daycare Center. And a lot of really wonderful stuff goes on after that. So let's take a look at the trailer. Over the hill! Now, come on, guys. We all knew this day was coming. We're getting thrown away. No, no one's getting thrown away. We ain't ever getting played with. Hold on. This is no time to be hysterical. It's the perfect time to be hysterical. Could we be hysterical? Now. Yes, maybe. But not right now. Come on. Let's see how much we're going for on eBay. New toys! I'm going to get played with. My nose. There it is. Here's your arm. That's Honey, mine. the mustache. We're busting out of here. On three. One. Three. Whoa. <laughs> Two infinity. And beyond. <laughs> to reset your Buzz Lightyear, insert paper clip. Rap, use your finger. Rap, go. Ah. Did you just fart? Pitagora <laughs> espacial. Uh, sort of. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Return of the Astro Nuts. So all our old Toy Story friends are back. Woody, Buzz, Ham, and the like. Jonathan, take it away. Thoughts? Well, I mean, I really, I really loved the first Toy Story. I remember very clearly when I, w when I watched it the first time and realizing that for almost the whole movie, I had been leaning forward and smiling. <laughs> watching the movie and then when I saw the second one I didn't like it as much I felt like it was it kind of relied more on just kind of action and chases and stuff it's been a while since I've seen that one I don't remember it as well but this one I feel like is a return to the to form more like the first one and uh, Matt and I saw this on Saturday and it ended up being I would really say one of the kind of better movie going experiences I've had like in my in my life I'll oh, actually wow. say because it was one of, like the movie Everyone was l in the theater was laughing loud and hard through the entire movie. Like every single part of the movie, whether it was a joke that happened on screen or some little detail or some little funny thing about the way the toy moves or something. And everyone was laughing and laughing and laughing until the very end when everyone was crying. Crying hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like not choked up. Like I heard sobs. I heard sniffles. Like people were really crying. And it was just one of those things that just makes you happy to be at the movies and that that you can sit in a dark room and share this experience and that people are feeling so much about these toys right. <laughs> and, the, and their life and their thoughts and like how they're trying to figure out you know, who they are and what's going to happen to them. And I just think it's such a rare gift that you get to sit in a theater and have that type of experience. So like, I don't have enough, like I couldn't believe how good it was to the point where I want to see it again. I was like, is it, was it really that good? Yeah, I said that in my review. I said, this is how good the people at Pixar are. That they, they make you feel these genuine emotions for hunks of plastic. So were you among the sobbing? Uh, you Any know, sensitive soul, you? I, I will say that I have not, I, I have been choked up at a few movies in the last few years. Um, but I haven't had tears running down my face like I did in this one. Really? Not like the beginning of Up, that beautiful uh, You know, I got choked up. up. I got choked up at that. I got choked up at the end of Wally. Yeah. I get choked up to this day watching Rudy. Uh, there's a few movies that do that to me, but this one, tears coming down my wow. face. Yeah. And, and I'm going to warn people out there, bring Kleenex. Yeah. You're going to need it. You know, bring a different shirt. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a measure of how talented the animators and the story, I shouldn't even just call them anima animators, that's a disservice to the storytellers are at Pixar that for a movie like Up, for instance, they can get people choked up and outright crying within the first 12, 15 minutes of the movie. Now imagine what they can do with characters you've known for 15 years. Talk about pulling the heartstrings. You know, and, and you've got a good point, Jonathan, that this movie is one of those movies that, you know, as Ken Turan says in, the, in his LA Times review, this is a movie that reminds you why, to go, why you go to the movies. You know, you see a movie like this and you'll sit through six months of middling movies just to try and capture that kind of feeling again. Because it's, it's, that's what it brings to you. That's, uh, you know, and I, it, does it sound like I'm overpraising it? Not at all. I feel like they 
get feelings out of you that it's very rare. I would put this movie up there with a level of something like The Godfather, like wow. Star Wars. Wow. You know, I, I'm going to go big with my rating right now and tell you I'm giving this one a 10. Are you giving it a 10? I'm giving it a 10. Okay. I wanted, I wanted I, to do it, you know, but I, right. I, I'm giving it a 10, absolutely. You know, I, I thought this movie is amazing. You know, you, you're, you're worried from the toys. You're worried for the characters from the get-go. You, you know, as much as in the end of Toy Story 2, they acknowledge that Andy's going to grow up and leave them. But they say, but it'll be a good ride. But it's a different thing when they're actually confronted that, co confronted with that reality. And what's great about the guys at Pixar is that they respect their characters enough to to treat them with a certain amount of dignity and and show how they would react to this and show how scary that is for them, right? As opposed to, you know, you see in the Shrek movies where they poke fun at the characters and and there's there's a lack of respect, for instance, in some other animated films. In this one, there's absolutely of respect for these characters that really shows through. Right. And I think that makes a big difference. So, you know, when they get to the daycare center and they think that's going to be such a haven for them, such a, you know, and on the surface it seems like such a great idea. And then we see even, we see this, this isn't really a spoiler because we see what happens in the trailers. It turns out things aren't that good. Things aren't really what they thought they were going to be. That's right. one of the interesting right? things I, I thought was that, like, it actually reminded me of um, of the book Watership Down, mm -hmm. where they're you know it's about these group of rabbits that are trying to find a new home, and they meet these different rabbits, and each group of rabbits has like a different kind of social system, a different political right. system. And so when the toys go to this daycare center, they're confronted with this new kind of social system, this new society, and which is really harsh, right? <laughs> and like almost militaristic and prisonish. Right. Well, and I and think one of the other things it does is. You know, surprisingly for a kids movie, you know, it's it's very easy to look at animated films and say that oh, these are this is kids stuff. And what's again, what's great about the Pixar team is that they don't treat it that way. This movie is as relevant for adults as it is for children. And there's some very sophisticated ideas going on in here. Not the least of which, be careful what you wish for. You know, oh, we'll go to the daycare. That'll be great. Yeah, maybe not so much. Right. There's that, and I wrote my review as well that um, it raises this existential question, like, if nobody acknowledges you, do you still exist? Exactly. And which is very complicated, which, you know, kids won't get. Kids will think it's cute and funny right. and they'll love the energy of it, but, but it works, of course, for adults on many, many levels. This is the beauty of the Pixar films is that story is fundamental and paramount. Right. But I also love all the details. This one is in 3D, which I'm not a big fan of the 3D. I don't think this really needs to be yeah, in 3D. Yeah, I don't think it's essential. But having said that, the details, especially when you go back and look at the original Toy Story, the details are just phenomenal. Like, it's so tactile. And right. the use of lighting and just perspective. And there's this one gorgeous scene where, you know, they're at the, at the daycare, and it's at night, and Buzz sneaks into the, the break room where all the other toys are having a secret meeting inside right. the vending machine. And this light comes streaking into the dark room from the vending machine, and it's just, it's gorgeous. It's right. painterly almost. And then there's this, this great um, sepia toned flashback, right. which explains the origin story of the, the big pink teddy bear, Lotso, well, voiced by Ned Beatty, who's phenomenal. Right. You know, and the, mm -hmm. the first two Toy Story movies have recently come out on Blu ray, and I actually went back and watched them after watching this movie because. I needed to get back with those characters again. Mm -hmm. And so I immediately picked them up, and as, as amazing as those movies are, and for the time, they look beautiful. Right. You watch the first Toy Story after watching this, and it looks like an unfinished animatic. Yeah. But the emotion but, is still there, and the, 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 the character is development there. is still there, of Right, course. I mean, these, right. you know, uh, the reality is these guys could have told the story with puppets, and it probably would have moved you as much. Well, what's interesting about the 3D, I mean, I, I agree with you. If you're trying to save money, you don't need to see it in 3D. But there's something about the way the 3D is done in this where it seems like the depth is really continuous where it feels like you're looking almost like on a stage, you know, because there's in a lot of 3D movies, it's like, well, there's the thing in the front, and then there's right. the thing in the middle, the thing they in the back. They throw things at you. Yeah, we're, but this, it just feels like it's a continuous space. I, I, I think Pixar is obviously, they're refining their 3D technique because Up felt a little bit like, well, that's the thing that's far away, and this is the thing that's close up, whereas this, it's like this kind of one continuous thing. But I think it's also so interesting how the movie has built on the themes started out in the first two, where, like, the first one is about sort of, identity and jealousy and obsolescence and you know buzz trying to uh, eventually learning what it is to be a toy and then the second one is about like well sh what are toys for should they be played right. with or should you know when woody has to make the decision do i want to be, be in a museum and loved and have all these people see me or do i want to be played with and and have you know this relationship right. with my with my owner and the way that th those all those ideas come together in this one i think is really amazing because now like they're, they said this existential crisis of like 
who are we? If we're put in the attic, who are we? Like, if we're thrown out, who are we? You know, like, what do we do? And, and I, they have such a rich interior life, you know, which is, is right. such a great idea in the first place. You know, that they, they can ask these questions of themselves. Right. And, and I also think that, I mean, it's, I was telling my parents that what's amazing about this one is you don't actually need to have seen the first two to, to right. get what's happening. Because all you need to understand is there's these toys and their, own, and their owner once loved them and now is older and is going and something's going to happen to them like you can start the movie right there and not know anything else about the characters but you'd figure it all out because the characters are so well written and the way that they act i think is just wonderful okay should we do ratings and then do our little spoiler alert let's, ratings let's, first let's do that okay so what is your rating well i mean it, you you went 10 i mean i i would i would have gone there except for i didn't think anyone had given a 10 yet so uh, i was and last time uh, i was accused of Janking up my rating <laughs> for uh, which he's, he's a verb now. Yes, yeah, exactly. He's which a noun and a verb. That's we're, we're janked up the <laughs> score. You, when you when you've made it like like Google or Photoshop, you know, that's when you really made it when you're when you're a verb. But um, but this one, I I can't really think about what you would do different or better in this. I would have given it a ten if, if anyone had done it before, but I gave it a nine point six. Okay, so nine point six for you. We know that you're. But Mr. a ten I, in my heart. I, I, you're Mr. Big Guns here with a ten. I'm, I'm going right. with a ten partly because I've been reading reviews for the movie all week, and I can tell you right now at this moment on Rotten Tomatoes, 135 reviews, every one of them positive. Now is that unprecedented to have 100 percent on something? That we've had a few. Um, most already... notably, the first two Toy Story movies. Interesting. Um, hmm. The f Toy Story 2 is at about 147 reviews mm -hmm. with 100%. Uh, last year's Man on Wire. That was great. Um, was, is it 140 reviews? Mm -hmm. I think that this one's going to top both of them. Okay. The only thing we're waiting for, and fans of the site will know this, is that Armand White from the New York Press, who hates everything everybody likes and likes everything everybody hates, will probably give it a negative rating. I just do. for fun, just to be the contrarian. That's, that's be the rebel. Rebel. Yeah, I am actually a little lower than you guys for reasons that we'll go into in our little spoiler alert segment. I give it a 7.9. Um, I loved it. I think it's gorgeous. But the novelty's not there. And this is the problem with Pixar is that they're excellent at what they do. And when you're excellent at what you do, anything that's even slightly below that in any way feels like a letdown. I mean, I, again, it's so much better than anything else that's out there as far as the, the big summer blockbuster stuff. Definitely better than the stuff that's in 3D, um, but I've got some problems with the ending. So I give it a 7.9. Still, our average is crazy high. It's like a 9.2, which that might be a new high for us, Could be. I believe. So 9.2 for Toy Story 3. All right, children. Turn away, turn away if you don't want to know what we're talking about next. Um, if you dare, stay and watch. We're gonna have a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> do -do 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 -do. I just love the spoiler alert graphic. I think we should use it every day in some way. It's just so darn cute. Okay, so the ending. So I'm gonna set the scene and then we're gonna talk about what all happens here. Um, the toys escape the daycare. And it's this very elaborate sort of great escape thing. They end up in a dumpster, and then they end up going to the dump. Right. And they avoid all these hazards, all these obstacles. Um, and it's really a surprise the way it happens, too, right? Because they get out of the building. They actually make it out and then are accidentally knocked into this dumpster, and it kind of takes you in a direction you're not really expecting. Right. To go they go to the dump, and they end up in this conveyor belt where they're going to potentially all be shredded up. They avoid that. That's pretty intense, but once they get through that little gateway there, um, they're in the incinerator. They are all plunging to their fiery death, potentially, here in an incinerator. And I'm sorry, I think it's impossible to watch it without thinking of the Holocaust. I mean, they're in an oven and they're going to get burned up. See, and I didn't catch that at all. Let me, let me finish, because okay. the thing is, Sorry. again, this is what's My so apologies. great about Pixar, is that they're so good at character development that you don't feel like you're watching toys. You feel like you're watching people plunging to their fiery doom. And I'm sorry, it's creepy for adults. It's going to be scary as hell for little kids. I mean, I don't know. I, there were no kids in my screening because I saw it on the lot. Were there kids crying and freaking out? No, mm -hmm. actually, they weren't. No, no they weren't, okay. actually. They, right. In fact, my girlfriend's six-year-old, I asked him about it afterwards. I said, was that scary? He said, well, I was worried about him, but he wasn't terrified. It's, I actually think there have been scarier moments in other Disney movies. Well, there's definitely instance, been more disturbing ones. I always think of The Lion King when Simba crawls under the dead arm of his father who had been trampled by wildebeests. Yeah. I was I mean, like, 
the kids are, I heard kids crying in the theater when I saw that. I, Bambi, you know, of course, Bambi in the forest, whatever. But that's not like a man-made well, forest but I, fire. I, it was like but, someone's burning these toys but up, I, and but that I think, me out. But I think there's a difference, mm -hmm. though, in that, you know, with a movie like Bambi, for instance, part of what's so traumatic in Bambi is that Bambi loses his mother, and that hits a kid mm -hmm. really where they live, mm -hmm. so to speak. Whereas this one... This is different. These these toy characters are really adults, if they're anything. They're not the toys themselves are not children. The toys are adults, and so I don't think that the kids identify with them the way they would with Bambi. And that's I don't think it's as disturbing as you're thinking it is. Okay, that's it freaked me out. On. I'm going okay. They're going to burn the toys, and it just goes in this totally dark direction out of nowhere, and. I thought that might be a little too intense. Well, in my so. review on the Huffington Post, the, uh, one guy wrote in. He said that he took his four-year-old son, and the four-year-old was was upset by that. Yeah. But I mean, I think the thing is, like, there's real stakes. I mean, the sense of danger is so palpable, and there's actually this part that I thought actually drives home another theme that I felt was done more, more strongly in this than the other ones of the idea that they're all a family, that they're all together, right. that they'll never leave each other. And there's a part when they're in that incinerator where it comes up where, I mean, which really kind of got me right. in my heart. I was right. like, oh, my Completely God. Completely like, wordlessly. Yeah. Right. They're holding Com hands and they're all looking at each other like, here we go, guys. Right. And this there's no it. dialogue. This is it. There's right. no dialogue. Yeah. They just hold hands. And it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because it's like that idea that, I mean, this is their worst nightmare. You know, because in the beginning they're talking about this idea like, right. we might just be thrown out in the trash. Like, we, like we won't be donated right. or put in the attic. We'll just be left on the curb in a garbage bag. And this is the all-time worst nightmare. Right. Of, uh, this is the fruition of that nightmare. And they're right. living it all together. Right. But they're and all the together. And the reality of it is so much worse than they'd actually even imagined. Right? Right. It's, it's, it's going so worse than they ever, ever had dreamed of. And, they, and they're willing to go through it together. And it's, it's astounding. It's you guys amazing. are okay with it. I'm, I, the, I'm the lone contrarian here I, having a problem with the furnace. Okay. You know, I, I, I think it's right on the edge of appropriate. Right? I, I, I think that it's... I think that they, I think that they take a gamble. I think the Pixar folks take a gamble that the, you know, is is a five or a four year old going to have a problem with it? Maybe. Do I think kids that are a little bit older, I think they'll be okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, this movie does have darker elements than the other Toy Story movies. I mean, I think it's so interesting how the movie, this movie, has grown up with its audience. I mean, it's been fifteen right. years over this whole trilogy, and so a lot of people who were, you know, five, ten, who saw it back then, you know, they're older now. Yet it's still such a great movie well, for kids. It's really it's hard and, to explain. And I feel like you know it's it's hard to get down on them for taking mature a mature a relatively mature scene like the toys facing their death, when all along this series has been about children growing up and moving on, from the very beginning, from the very first movie, when Woody's afraid that Andy's going to just lose interest in him, from the very first one, all along this series has been about kids growing up and and on a certain level, parental mortality as seen through the eyes of this of these children and what it's going to be like for parents when their kids grow up and move away right, and, and forget I, about them. I admire the ambition of it and I admire the risk of it and that they do give their audience credit for being able to invest that kind of stuff. I think this direction they took was a miscalculation. Have there been uh, any see, reviews that have said that that has been too dark? You know, I think most of the reviews actually, when people talk about it, what most people have a problem with is the first act. Is that oh, they really? feel like the uh, most the consistent complaint that I've seen, and people say it's a minor one, tends to be is that the first part of it is a little uneven. But once you get into the second act and kind of the prison break, and then the peril, as much as you know, there are a little bit of grumblings about whether or not it's age appropriate. But I think, you know, really it's kind of up to the parents as to whether or not you're going to discuss that with your children. I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's so scary that you should keep kids away from it. All right. Great. We could be here all day talking about right. this, basically. <laughs> um, so we've got to move on. But thanks for sticking around. Next week we have two biggies for you as far as star power. We have Night and Day with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. And we have Grown Up with everyone who's ever been on Saturday Night Live ever in their lifetime. So <laughs> for Matt and Jonathan, I'm Christy. Thanks for watching.